Good afternoon and welcome to Greenland on what is the world's longest day of the summer solstice and how warm it is today. Brrr. Greenland, how did it get its name? Well, it turns out quite interestingly, it was the first example of real estate blah blah recorded in human history because according to the Icelandic sagas, Eric the Red, when he got kicked out of Iceland for murder or manslaughter, came here and called it Greenland because he thought that if he gave it a good name, then more people would want to come. Thanks for that, Eric the Red, but to be fair to the guy, the name Iceland, which would have been more appropriate, was already taken. I'm here in Ilyusap in northwestern Greenland on the edge of the ice fjord because it's damn interesting. One of the things that's interesting about this ice fjord is that it's one of the world's largest generators of icebergs. The Arctic is ocean surrounded by continents, which is different from the Antarctic, which is continent surrounded by ocean. So in the Antarctic, you can create icebergs falling off land in lots and lots of places. But there are a few places in the northern hemisphere that generate icebergs, and nowhere generates icebergs as much as this place. The Icefjord Glacier here is one of the fastest moving glaciers in the world. It moves forward at about 30 or 40 metres a day. Each day, more water in ice carves off the glacier than New York City uses in an entire year. Think about that for a second. And because this is the main generator of icebergs in the Northern Hemisphere, most people are pretty certain that the iceberg that sank the Titanic came from here. So here at the mouth of the ice fjord, it's about 250 meters deep. The deepest point in the fjord is about a thousand meters deep. So these huge icebergs carve off the glacier and drift their way down the fjord until they hit this shallow point. And some of these magnificently large icebergs can wait here two, three years before they melt enough or crush themselves enough on the, on the floor of the fjord to make their way out head down the North Atlantic and looking for another Titanic to sink. It's Greenland's national day today and the summer solstice, so it's the longest day and the warmest day. <laughs> it's also the day they celebrate with a church service and the catching of the first seal. It's pretty gruesome. <laughs> Geographically speaking, whilst you might think of Greenland as part of Europe, in fact it is part of North America. It is on the North American continental plate and geologically speaking sits more as part of the Canadian archipelago as the world's largest island. Isn't Australia the world's largest island? And indeed, that's what I was taught in primary school. But clearly there have been some geographers who needed to get some more funding and convince someone to pay them to have an argument about whether you can be an island and a continent at the same time. Think about it this way. If you define an island as a land mass surrounded by water, then Europe, Asia and Africa that are a single land mass would be the world's largest island. If you say they are continents and therefore not islands, then what is Antarctica? Well, clearly Antarctica is a continent and not an island, even though it's twice as large as Australia. So what is Australia? Well, Australia is a continent and an island. Well, if you say it's a continent, it can't be an island. And if Australia is not an island, that means the next baby, Greenland, is the world's largest island. Greenland is almost 80% covered by its ice sheet. There are only two ice sheets in the world, as opposed to ice caps and the ice sheets are in the Antarctic and here in Greenland. If all of Greenland's ice sheet melts, then the world's sea level would rise by seven meters. But something else interesting would happen here in Greenland because the vast majority of central Greenland is 300 meters below sea level. That means if all the ice melts, Greenland would have the world's largest freshwater lake or depending on how much sea level rise, would turn into three islands. Not a bad backdrop to a hike really, is it? Ever had one like this? I don't know quite how to describe this place. It's one of the most surreal I've ever been to. Greenland hasn't always been as cold as it is today. 
when drilling through the ice cap they have found evidence of old forests and even butterflies dating back 450,000 years showing that the world was warmer by about 8 degrees 450,000 years ago. And the world was even warmer before the last mini ice age between the years 800 and 1300. Now how do they know that? Because they were growing barley here in Greenland up to the 70th parallel, 70 degrees north they had crops. So who owns Greenland? Well there have been several waves of human migration into Greenland over history. Somewhere over two, two and a half thousand years BC, the people that are now known as the Paleo Eskimos once lived in Greenland. The Inuit who live in Greenland now don't have a single trace of the Paleo Eskimo gene. After Inuit migration, then came Eric the Red, calling the place Greenland. But the Norse settlement here probably never extended beyond two, two and a half thousand people and evacuated about a thousand years ago. The last wave of migration came from the Danish and the Norwegian colonialists. When Hitler invaded Denmark during World War II, the Americans came over to protect the place and built a couple of air force bases, which are still the major airports coming in and leaving Greenland today. And in fact, the Americans offered Denmark $100 million to buy Greenland, just like they bought Alaska. The Danes didn't sell Greenland, so it's still part of Denmark. The Danes historically haven't been the world's greatest colonizers. They did a lot of pro-Danish policies in the 1950s, not too dissimilar from the stolen generation policies in Australia. The Inuits got all upset about that, demanded greater and greater freedom, and now are largely self-governed as part of the Danish Kingdom. Indeed, at a referendum, they decided to leave the European Union. So while Denmark is part of the EU, Greenland is not part of the EU. For the life of me, I don't understand why the Scots don't take this model. Why can't Scotland stay in the EU and England leave if Greenland can be out of the EU and Denmark stay in? There is a model, it can be done. So the last thing I'll say about Greenland is it is absolutely spectacular to visit. Whilst I've seen bigger icebergs in the Antarctic, seeing icebergs floating next to buildings and outside a city, that is genuinely rare. And flying over this massive island, you see all of these frozen waterfalls, which are the glaciers coming off the ice cap down into the fjords. It is an absolutely geographically stunning place to come. Although, this being the hottest and longest day of the year, I wouldn't want to live here. Yeah, Andrew, how are you going? Good, mate. Love towering above me there, don't you? I do. What a magnificent lake. It is, it's stunning, isn't it? Yeah. So tell me, you were saying that the world has been colder now than before. So does that mean all this climate change is baloney? No. Well, yes and no. Um, yes, in the sense that if someone says that uh, climate change is just caused because of man, that's baloney. But that's not the question. Uh -huh. What is? The question is about the acceleration of climate change. Yes, the world is colder yeah. now than it's been before, and that doesn't mean the Earth is going to ride this out. Really? The question is about the accelerated change. So and Clearly, the change is going much faster now than it ever has before. Why are the environmentalists saying that it's just man-made? Well, the environmentalist movement get themselves into a little bit of a tiz, don't they? And they get themselves into a little bit of a tiz because they like to be uh -huh. dogmatic. They say climate change is happening because of man. Now, in any time you create an argument based on an absolute, there only needs to be one exception to defeat you. What do you mean exactly? I don't get it. Well, let me put it this way. If you're going to work and you say the traffic lights are always red, yeah, I only need are. to find one example when the traffic light is green to show that your case that it's always red is wrong. So if you say that climate change is beca caused because of man, I just need to give you one piece of evidence where it's not caused by, uh, because of man and your case falls down. See what you say. So what the environmentalist movement should be doing is not arguing that climate change is caused because of man, but the acceleration on top of the natural underlying cyclical change is caused by man. And it's the acceleration. So that's about acceleration. By the way, aren't you cold not wearing a jacket? Well, you're wearing mine. Good point.